All right, next up, we got the Wrong Turn series. These are on sale right now in a one, like one pack like this, it has all six films on it for 13 bucks at Walmart. If you wanna go check these out. Um, and if you wanna wait till I'm done reviewing all of them to see if it's worth it, you can do that too. I have seen all six of these. I remember liking all of them except for I think four Bloody Beginnings. Um, but I'm, I'm very curious to go back and watch all of these again. So let's start with this first one. Starring Eliza Dushku from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. What a gorgeous woman. And she is a cool actress. And I really like her in this film, as always. We also have Quinn from Dexter, which I love Dexter, except for that horrendously awful eighth season. What a dreadful way to end such a glorious show. We also have Jeremy Sisto who's actually playing a nice character for once. I'm so used to his asshole characters like he plays on Six Feet Under. It was nice to change it up for once. Uh, this movie has a ton of gore, you know, great kills, had, builds fabulous tension. It, rely, it doesn't rely on jump scares almost ever. It's a pretty well-crafted film, and, and I'm... When I was looking up the director's work after this, he did like the Alphabet Killer with Eliza Dushku as well. And he has some projects in development, but this guy almost never worked after this. And I'm not sure why, because this is a really good horror movie. And usually if you can make a really good horror movie, they pick you up to make, you know, bigger budget stuff and whatnot. Everyone starts in horror. And I'm not really sure why this guy didn't take off because this is a good fucking movie. Yes, it feels a little cheaper and the critics hated on it. Blah, blah, blah. I guess that's probably what it was. But watching this movie, I was like, damn, man, this, this director's actually got some talent. That sucks that he didn't do anything after this. I mean, he did The Alphabet Killer. I haven't seen it. Maybe it sucks. It has a fairly decent rating, so I don't know. The scene where... the the This whole movie, I really honestly have like almost no complaints about this movie. I thought it was great from beginning to end. I really like the characters. The few characters that I didn't like died almost instantly. They're the dickhead characters that you want to die, and they die real quick. Has a cool opening. These people are climbing rocks, and the how you know the the boyfriend or the husband or whatever he is gets to the top. He gets pulled away. The girl's like on the rope. She looks like she might be a bit of a beginner. She's relying on that rope. They throw his body over. She's on the rope. They're pulling it up. She cuts the rope. She's trying. She falls down. They get her. It's a tense scene, man. And then it moves into this guy who is in traffic. He wants to get somewhere fast. He can't. He takes a back road, tries to, you know, make a, he makes a wrong turn, I guess, and crashes into a car because he's looking off in a different direction. And from there, I mean, it never lets up. This movie, once they get to the house, like Jeremy Sisto and Eliza Dushku and, uh, you know, Quinn and this other girl, um, Carly is her character's name, I don't know the actress. Beautiful, all the girls in this movie are beautiful. Um, they get to this house, and when they get to this house, man, from like that whole house scene, basically from there on, it's just complete tension from, from, from that moment on. Um, but that house scene, where they go in the house and they're looking through the shit, and she finds the body in the, in the bathtub, and he goes and he opens up the fridge, and he finds body parts in there, and then they see the hillbillies coming, so they hide under the shit, and they watch their friend getting hacked up, and their her body's all mangled. That shit's fucking tense, and then they're trying to sneak out of the house while those guys are sleeping. My only real problem with that scene, and you know, this is just decisions you make in the moment. You never know what you're going to do, so I can't really... I don't know, give them shit for this, but it's like, why didn't they all grab something and fucking, like, on three, stabbed these motherfuckers in the head while they were sleeping. It was their best chance of survival, for sure. But they didn't do it, and, you know, whatever. We wouldn't have had a movie if they did that, right? So, moving on. Um, and I like that when they do see them, they wake up, and they see them, and they, they go running off the, out the door. The guys don't, like, chase after them. No, they go and they grab their gun, they grab their bow and arrow... You know, they grab their shit and they jump in the truck and they're like, you know, cheering off their truck. They got game to go hunt. Like, this is fun to them. This isn't like where they're just killing them, you know, because 
they're psychotic or I mean obviously they are but like this is their entertainment they get off on this they enjoy killing you know so I thought that that was kind of cool and they have a gun like you don't see many of these slasher type films they almost always use like a machete or you know some kind of stabbing implement or or you know something along that a chainsaw something like that but they actually have a gun in this movie which is is a rarity um and they use it <clears throat> they don't use it to kill anybody though only to wound them um there's some great makeup in this movie on the hillbillies i hope i mean otherwise they got some ugly ass actors they really had to go into the boonies to find these people but pretty sure it's pretty sure it's a uh, makeup but it looks great so i don't know who did it i know that like i saw like stan winston's name in the producer's slot so i don't know if i'm guessing he probably gave them some credit maybe he did the special effects i didn't see his name attached to it but i may have been looking down at that moment um probably too late to check that now but uh yeah, special effects makeup by Stan Winston Studios. Okay, that makes sense. So, great gore, great makeup, Stan Winston, makes sense. Um, Carly has this moment where after she sees her boyfriend killed and her friends mutilated and cut up, she like wants to give up. And I know a lot of people get down on scenes like that where she's crying and she's being annoying and she's just like, I can't, I can't anymore, I can't go on. And then from that moment, she actually goes into like hysterics where something happens, so they see the bear trap and she's just lost it and she starts laughing. She ends up pulling it together a little bit and then unfortunately dying. But you have to see those scenes for the reality of it, you know? You would, I'm sorry, there's people, lots of people, you, me, everyone, there's a good possibility that you could lose it. Yes, is it entertaining in a film? Is it annoying? I get it, it's not, but it is realistic. So I can always just look past the annoyingness of it and be like, that is how some people would react. They would fucking lose their shit and be like, I am not going on, I know a few people that I can pretty much guarantee this is what would happen to them. So when I watch this kind of shit, I'm always like, this is what would happen. I'm sorry. Um, we get a we get a first blood tree hop out of the out of the burning firehouse here. One of my favorite scenes from First Blood. One of the greatest movies ever made, in my opinion. Um, and all three of them successfully land on branches and break no ribs, break no nothing. That's some serious bullshit. But whatever. I I guess I would have liked to have seen them. One of them, especially the girl that ends up dying, Carly if she would have been a little bit more fucked up by for jumping into those branches and being flipped over and over end and then finally landing and breaking some bones, it would have added some realism to, instead of all three of them successfully sticking the landing and none of them crying out in any form of pain. Like they all just landed and they're like, oh, got it, all right, nailed it. And it's like, come on, like one of them at least, all of them, but one of them at least would have been seriously injured. And probably the tree branch would have broken. They would have fallen to their death. Um, best kill in this movie is Carly. So, I mean, he comes up, puts the axe through her head. They get a close-up on her face her, of her eye. It dilates, which you rarely see when someone dies. Their eye dilates. Um, you see it a little bit more now that we have better CGI and whatnot. But this is 2003, so this is a little pre-date here. Um, but, yeah, you see an eye of people. And then pans off and the axe is still sitting here the body falls away and you get this top shot of the body falling through the trees hitting the branches on the way down with the you know from the head still here on the body all the way down and the head st sitting on top of the axe fantastic shot man what a great kill i'd put this in a really high spot in some of the coolest looking kills i've seen on screen um, so I, I was like, oh man, I don't remember this. What a great, what a great, great kill. Um, this whole like when people are being hunted in horror movies and somebody runs out and they're like, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Like, now granted these are inbred hillbillies, so they're probably not the brightest of the bright. You know, uh, <laughs> they're not applying to Mensa. They're not getting in to you know any of the any of the prestigious schools um but in this movie and in any other movie it 
I always have to be like, really, you don't realize that they're doing that? Like, why would they be hiding this whole time and then all of a sudden being like, over here, over here, you can't catch me, asshole. Like, that's clearly a diversion tactic. Like, why do they have to yell out, I'm over here, I'm over here, just from their standpoint? Like, why wouldn't they just take off running and make a lot of noise? The whole, like, yelling and being like, I'm here, it's so clear what you're doing Especially when there's three of them, like there is in this movie, one or two of them could go chase for you and then the other one could stay behind to find the people you're clearly trying to distract them for. So just that whole thing, it happens in almost literally every fucking movie where I see where this happens, where the person's like, you stay here, I will distract them, and you go around, all right, here, I'm here. And it's like, come on, don't be stupid. But there isn't a lot of stupid decisions in this movie. And there's things you could nitpick and be like, I would have done this. Yeah, right. Uh, but there's none that are like, oh my God, what an idiot. I, there's like very little, like I would be yelling at the screen. I had no moments where I was like, why wouldn't you do this? As I said, they could have stabbed him in their sleep, but it's not completely idiotic. Another thing that happens in this movie, which I've seen happen in a few movies, uh, Cape Fear with the Robert De Niro remake, a few other movies, is the whole hiding under the car and like grabbing and holding yourself under the car. For one, your body, I don't think, could handle that. Physically, your arms would give out, whether you wanted them to or not, no matter how strong you are after a while. But they're doing this on a dirt road that is not paved. So this is not just a straight, clean road where the clearance level is going to remain the same. Like it's rocky and you'd be hitting, you know, potholes and divots and the, his body would have been mangled. It's only this far off the ground to begin with. There's definitely moments when you're driving those back road country roads where he would have been squashed. So. When they see these in these kinds of movies, I'm just always like, oh, I'm so stupid. <laughs> it would never work. It would never work. And he didn't go chasing him through the woods like he has every other time in this movie, just conveniently took him back. But he does take him back to the house, and this is where he comes and he drives a fucking truck right through the house. I mean, how he does, how he knows that Elijah Dusku's character isn't sitting right there. Maybe he took a peek through the window. We didn't see that, but... He takes the chance to drive it through. He's there to save her. He could have just took in the truck and drove off and, and been like, fuck her. I don't even know her anyway. Um, but he does it, to, obviously, to rescue her. So I'm, I'm just going to, for my own sake, <laughs> say that he looked through the window and was like, all right, she's over here. I'll crash the truck over here. Um, but yeah, I mean, he crashes the truck through. Sets the pluck in place of Blaze, gets in this gnarly fight. It's tense, it's in, it's intense, it's brutal. There's just lots of like axes flying and people getting choked out with like barbed wire and blood. And this movie does not pull any punches. And I love how brutal and, and real it is. I really enjoyed this movie. And then, you know. I love that at the end, he has the, like, how is, how is he gonna take these guys out? He has one bullet and a gun and he shoots the gas tanks. And instead of having that like moment where the cool guy's like walking away and he throws the thing behind him and it blows up. I know they made like a joke of it in that like other guys movie, I think. I never saw it, Will Ferrell, Mark Wahlberg movie. I think that's the one. Um, but here, like, and it's not even addressed. It's just kind of very, like, it's, you can barely see it unless you're paying really close attention, but like they shoot it and their bodies are thrown backwards. And I was like, now that's realistic. Usually they just shoot it and the house would blow up and you'd like blow the gun smoke off and he'd be like, you know, <laughs> say some cheesy line and then grab her and make out with her or something. But in this one, they get you know, tossed and thrown. And, and the movie ended and I was like, oh my God, they're not gonna do a, you know, oh my God, they're still alive for a sequel. They're still out there. And I, I was actually writing it down on my list. I have it all here. And then it like goes to credits for like a couple seconds. And it comes back up. And I was like, oh, son of a bitch, they're going to do it. I mean, I'm sitting here with five sequels at my feet. So I know they made another one, but still, come on. All right, guys, this movie was a ton of fun. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting to the next ones. Uh, it's late, so I got out of bed, but I had fun. All right, guys.